Well, hi, everybody. My name is Radha Patel, and I'm the founder and CEO of Single to Shadi, the reason why you guys are all here today. Uh, we meet monthly to discuss a book in our Mindful Dating book club about you know anything that's related to being brown, relationships, marriage. And with this month being our focus on astrology, I was so excited to find Shweta, who is our guest for today, um, and found her. She also wrote a book, which is what we're discussing today. So let me introduce Shweta to everybody, and we'll kick it off. Shweta Gandhi is a renowned author and astrologer who combines her expertise in astrology with heartfelt storytelling to guide us on a profound journey of self-discovery and purpose. In the book that we're all discussing today, Shweta encourages readers to reconnect with their true selves and uncover a unique purpose that lies within each of us using the wisdom of astrology. So with that, Shweta, I'd like to turn it over to you if you'd like to introduce yourself to our team, our group. Amazing. Thank you so much for that introduction. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for taking out time from your busy schedules. Um, I'm going to be taking you through a little introduction of astrology, um, borrowing from what I have written in my book. And if the, if you all have any questions, we can address that at the end. Okay. So um, I just put it in the chat quickly. If you guys have any questions, you have read the book, you can definitely drop them in. Otherwise, we'll get to them a little bit towards the end. But um, so I'll just start with my experience reading the book. I'll say, Shweta, thank you so much for sending me this copy. I got a personalized copy, you guys, which is so cool. Um, and I started doing the exercises. And for me, with this month being Astrology Month, I really went through the whole gamut. And I hope everybody um, kind of followed along with us, that, you know, the single Shadi group. But we started out the month just diving into talking a little bit about what is Vedic Astrology. Then we did a full-blown workshop on how to read your birth chart and the significance of it. And now we're evolving even more to understand how was our birth chart even written? How was this all determined? And that comes from within, and that's our soul. So Shweta, I understand you have a little bit of a presentation you want to share with us? I do, yes. Um, let me just see if I can share screen. Um, I'm having a little bit of difficulty. Share screen button at the bottom. Like a... A green arrow that says share. Yeah, I can see it, but I'm unable to click on it. Mm. Let me just see. Can I, can I just refresh this? Go to if not, you can send it to me and I don't mind. I can share it as well. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think my computer is frozen. Uh-oh. Just give me a second. Oops. The friends who are joining us today, um, you can just put it in the chat if you want, but did everybody, did anybody grab a copy of Remember Who You Are? And I believe it's available on Kindle as well. So even if you didn't actually get the paper book, you can still do the workbook and the activities on the Kindle version. I just uh, sent it to you, Radha, on email. If you can open it at your end, that would be great. Okay. I hope this works. Okay, amazing.
I'm not sure how to make it a uh, slide. Oh, here it is, slideshow. Okay. Slide. Okay, amazing. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. So I'm going to take you through a little bit about astrology. Um, and like I mentioned before, all of this is um, content that I've borrowed from my book. So if you haven't picked up a copy yet, it's available at Barnes & Noble in the US and at Indigo here in Canada. I'm based in Toronto, um, if I didn't mention that earlier. Um, we can go to the next slide, please. Okay, so just beginning with the introduction, um, human beings have always intuitively felt a connection with the cosmos and the invisible realm of the universe. The movement, uh, the movements of the planets influence our lives just the way solar and lunar cycles affect seasons and the growth of crops. Each one of us is unconsciously influenced by these celestial forces. It is believed that astrology holds the tools that can help heal, transform, and ascend the mind, body, and soul. According to ancient religious manuscripts, the entire zodiac represents a person and each sign needs to be integrated fully for us to become whole. Moving to the next slide. So uh, as I mentioned in my book, what I've actually done is I've taken astrology as a tool to break down and understand our personality. Um, so the sky is divided into 12 zodiac signs and each sign has a planet, a house, and an element that it rules. The 12 houses represent the basic functions of life. The placement of the sun, moon, planets at the exact moment of your birth creates your natal chart or your birth chart. And understanding and decoding your natal chart is an important key to navigating the depths of your character, personality, your life circles, and so much more. So the idea is to... Um, uncover your personality through your birth chart or your natal chart and this can help us understand where we are meant to go who we're meant to be what we're meant to be doing and why we're really here on planet earth um, your birth chart is like a code or a blueprint that you can use to navigate the course of life if you pay close attention it can show you details of your future that will manifest in divine timing so moving to the next slide So um, I'm pretty sure everyone who's here knows their sun sign, but we may not know our moon sign or our rising sign. And this is where studying astrology at a deeper level can help uh, us. Because if we understand we're not just our sun sign, we're so much more than that, it opens the doors to delving deeper into astrology. So it really is a myth that each person's sun sign traits exactly define their personality. And that's why maybe if you're reading your zodiac signs, um, reading for the day, it may not resonate with you because you actually need to be reading your moon sign or your ascendant, which is your rising sign. So understanding the three signs, the sun sign is who we are on the outside. It's the, it's the external personality we display to the world. Um, it's our ego identity and it's our role in life. The moon sign is actually our emotional self and it's the side that we show our friends and family at home. It's the person we are when we're by ourselves. Um, and that's why it's associated with uh, the, the hidden world, which is what the moon represents as well. Um, it's the side that we uh, keep at a distance from others, but we show to our close people our close circle. The rising sign or the ascendant is how we come across to people uh, when they first meet us. It's the first impression that we create on people. Um, it's the mask we wear in public and it's those inner motivations that drive us to be who we are. So I would say you are the sum of your sun, moon and rising sign and the three together would uh, culminate together to show you what your personality really is. Um, if we can move to the next slide. So understanding astrology at a deeper level involves going into the elements that you most resonate with and the ones that are already there in your birth chart. So there are four elements, 
um, that create a comprehensive whole that reflects your unique personality traits. There's fire, air, water, and earth. Fire is um, fire people are enthusiastic, they're active, motivated. They're the ones who are always going out and doing things. A lot of leaders have fire in their zodiac uh, sign or their chart. Air uh, qualities are intellectual, um, sociable, curious, studious, witty. A lot of air people are very argumentative um, or they enjoy debating. Um, water signs are intuitive, creative, artistic, empathetic, and emotional. A lot of healers that you will meet, a lot of um, caretakers will be water signs because they just have that innate need in them to help other people. And then the last one we have is earth. Earth signs are grounded, secure, practical, realistic material. They're the ones who connect with Mother Earth, with the nature, and they feel more grounded when they spend time in nature. So this is just a quick personality test for yourself. I want you to um, think which element do you resonate with the most and note it down just for yourself. And if you resonate with more than one element, that's absolutely okay as well, because we are the sum of all four. Um, in our natal chart, the elemental makeup that we have is usually all four signs put together, but it could be that one sign or two signs could have the majority of your focus or attention in this lifetime. And then the other signs would be where you have to grow and there's a bit of a learning curve with those signs. So knowing which element resonates the most with you, or even if it's two, will help you understand what your strengths are. And the other elements that you don't resonate with would show what your weakness is and where you have to work on the most. Moving to the next slide. So we're just going to dive deep into the 12 zodiac signs, and we're starting with Aries. The dates here are all according to Western astrology. Um, I have... I have written a longer description of each zodiac sign in my book, um, but here I've just put together the general characteristics so that it's easier just in bullet points. Um, Aries, like I said, they have, it's the element is fire and they're always very, um, you know, they always put themselves out there. So they could, their general characteristics, uh, characteristics include them being a pioneer, a vision, Visionary. They're the ones who are taking risks and um, they, they're very assertive, inventive. Um, they're the ones who are creating original ideas out of the unknown. And they always have something new up their sleeve. Uh, they can be very dominating um, uh, uh, as well as courageous because Aries is that zodiac sign which would put themselves um, out into a space, even if they're by themselves, even if it's unknown territory, they will uh, be the ones who will put themselves out there and explore what's there and then come back and tell the others that this is what we explored or this is what we um, <laughs> know uh, that is um, what makes them. Um, the ruling, uh, ruling planet is Mars. Um, Mars is known as the planet of aggression, which is why those characteristics come down into Aries as well. And the color to Z, that is associated with high energy and that's what Aries is. I've also included some suggested career pathways. Uh, it, it's This is what an ideal Aries would be doing if you are in Aries and if you are um, in this career, great. But if it isn't and you're doing something else, that's okay too, because we also have to consider our moon sign and our rising sign. So suggested careers for an Aries include being a dentist, surgeon, financial analyst, principal, hotel manager, construction worker, venture capitalist, and a personal trainer. So moving to Taurus. Taurus is the next sign. Um, the element, uh, I can see some Taurus uh, people here. The element is earth. And as I discussed before, earth people are practical, logical, and they're very much grounded. So um, 
their characteristics include being trustworthy, loyal, steadfast. Um, when they make up their mind, they're pretty sure that they want to do that. But they, at the same time, they're very reliable as well. Um, they're very patient with their process. Taurus people are very hardworking. Um, but at the same time, they can be very resistant to change, and which makes them a bit stubborn. Um, the color associated with Taurus is pink, because pink is the color of Mother Earth, the energy Mother Earth gives out. And because of a Taurus's love for um, detail, for art, and for peace, some suggested careers include being a fashion designer, interior designer, landscaping, being a banker, financial advisor, manager, restauranter, sommelier, or a furniture maker. Again, these are very idealistic careers, and um, they don't include, you know, mundane day-to-day -day work that you may or may not be doing, but it's still just setting a benchmark for your ideal dream life as a tourist. So moving to the next slide. Next we have is Gemini. Um, the, the scene as the twin personality in the zodiac sign and Gemini's being connected to the element of air are very intellectual, um, very good at debating. Their communication skills are often the strongest and they are uh, very witty as well because their imagination gives them so many ideas uh, and they're always improving themselves. They're always wanting to outdo their own self and if anything, they're in competition with themselves. Um, let's see, they're also very flexible and uh, and sociable. They enjoy being in big groups um, and expressing themselves, exchanging ideas. This is all that Gemini loves to do. Um, they could be very diplomatic as well, which could uh, sometimes be construed as them being um, them not being open or you know withholding information, but it's only because a Gemini loves collecting information from the outside and then they um, you know uh, digest it and and go through it. So they're they're very curious and their mind always keeps them on the go, collecting information, talking to new people, exploring new places. Um, suggested careers for a Gemini would be being a teacher, an interpreter, a PR person, translator, journalist, project manager, communication specialist, stylist, makeup artist. Um, as I mentioned, communication is really big for Gemini, uh, which is why they would do well in jobs which include that strength. Moving to the next slide. We have Cancer associated with the element of water. Cancerians uh, are very loyal to begin with and they love being a homebody. A Cancerian would also have a lot of friends because they are that emotional person. Um, and because of that, uh, because of their heart of gold, they're very empathetic. Um, they're very devoted to their family and they're very protective and caring about their friends and their close inner circle. They can also be very oversensitive um, as they do have moods that they go through. And if they're in their uh, little mood, then they may not be themselves. And it's usually a Cancerian needs to, you know, go back to their safe space, recharge, and then come back to face the external world. Um, they're very caring individuals, which is why they would do well as a nurse, a doctor, um, or a caterer, content manager, teacher, speech therapist, social worker, antique dealer, or even an author. The best part about a Cancerian is that uh, they genuinely care and they wear their heart on their sleeve. So you can be sure that um, their sensitivity and their you know, kindness will always leave a positive impact in your life if you ever connect with a Cancerian. Moving to the next slide. We have Leo, again, uh, with back to the element of fire, just like Aries, Leo is very aggressive 
um they really enjoy holding the spotlight in any situation or in any um condition if it's a workplace or um okay amazing radha um leos are born leaders and they're very faithful uh, to their close ones they're very charitable they enjoy giving back to society they enjoy doing donating they're very adventurous as well and this ties in from the element of fire because fire has that bold energy and again fire pushes people outside of their comfort zones which is why leos are overly um confident of who they are they're very extroverted personalities very ambitious with their dreams their goals um the perfect leo would be someone who is in a party surrounded by at least five people and this leo is sharing a story about their life and everyone is laughing leos love that attention and people are <laughs> people are naturally gravitated towards a leo because they exude that energy you know um they know that they're important they don't uh, pretend to be they are and everybody sees that um which is why they do so well as an actor or a designer where they're in front of people on a stage um they could also be an event planner marketer sales rep a teacher inspirational speaker or a pr person so anything that has to do with the public space or the public public realm a leo would be happy to take that on and uh they would be you know the first ones to um to stand up and do something they never shy to take on a new project or um explore a new place very adventurous bold spirit moving to the next zodiac sign we have virgo um the element is earth now workers are perfectionists uh if they commit to doing something they will end up doing it the only issue is that they they can be very self critical about themselves um which can cause them a uh, delay in their projects because they could you know sit on it for weeks when it's actually finished but they you know want to find unit and they want to add all these details which are not really important um to other people but being a virgo they're very meticulous about what they do um very practical uh they're extremely cautious they're always thinking about what could go wrong um and how to manage a situation if something does um so it's it's crazy because a virgo would be somebody who has an ocd for anything just because it's um innately who they are they want to be in control of something whether it's uh at work or in their own life the good thing is that they're very trustworthy and reliable so if you uh want to share a secret you can be sure that the virgo is going to keep it with them until the last day of their life um suggested careers for them include being a researcher investor therapist statistician um machinist manager chemist perfume maker cocktail mixologist landscaper uh did not mention this but virgo loves reading they're very intellectual um it's they do have some qualities that they borrow from air which is the reading but they're not as expressive as a gemini or a leo would be and that's why they can be a bit quiet but on the inside in their head it's like there's a lot going on um moving to the next zodiac sign we have libra um libras again uh the element is air very good with expressing themselves very communicative um diplomatic as well um but they are more just and ethical than the other air signs because um libra is represented by the scales which means that they're always weighing um this with that so it's always like um should i do this or should i do that is this option right is or is this right weighing the pros and cons constantly can make them very indecisive uh but they they'll always make a balanced decision even if it takes them a little extra time um 
Libra is also very drawn to art and um and they're very graceful when it comes to that. Uh, very artistic as well. Um, and they really enjoy taking care of people, which is why they're very hospitable. Um, in one word, I would sum up a Libra as being very polite. They're always very mindful of their actions uh, and their expressions, how they're coming across to other people, which is why they, they can be seen as very socially refined people. They love hosting parties. They love putting themselves out there. But at the same time, they're very diplomatic. They wouldn't really be 100% open with you, but they definitely would have uh, your your um they would have good intentions in their mind for you um suggested careers for a libra would be being an hr manager a legal analyst a buyer event planner business owner museum curator cultural critic graphic designer or a pro bono lawyer because they enjoy giving back and um and they feel good about that moving to the next sign we have scorpio uh, ruled by water. Scorpio is the darkest of water signs in in um in all in the entire zodiac sign. They can be very mysterious, um, very elusive. They may have something going on on the inside, but they may not communicate that, and they might share a different version of themselves completely with you. Um, they're very passionate when it comes to love. They can get very obsessive and controlling about their partners. They're very secretive as well. Like a Scorpio will not share what's going on in their life unless and until they completely trust you. And if a Scorpio trusts you, that is amazing because it's a bond for life. Scorpions are very loyal to their friends and family. Um, and they'll always be there for you. They'll always have your back. But... If you annoy a Scorpio or if you um, mess things up, even if it's not your fault, the Scorpio will never forgive you. And uh, they are known to be um, the toughest uh, zodiac sign uh, out of all 12 to um, hold resentment and have a, um, ill thoughts for other people. So they <laughs> Um, they do hold grudges. Uh, so it's said that don't ever double cross a Scorpio because karmically it'll come back to you. Suggested careers for a Scorpio include being a psychologist because they love penetrating mysteries, um, being a physician, an engineer, a marketing analyst, financial advisor, a surgeon, psychologist, again, um, psychiatrist is what I meant, um, social worker, detective, or archaeologist. So anything that's um, about problem solving um, or has any depth to it, a Scorpio would be attracted to it. Moving to the next sign, we have Sagittarius, um, ruled by the element of fire. Um, Sagittarians are very independent um, and outgoing people. They enjoy traveling, exploring, um, and meeting new people. And they really get a high from doing that. They enjoy putting themselves in um, adventurous uh, positions where, you know, they, they're they challenging themselves all the time. And um, and it's this uh, en enthusiastic personality that they have that everybody loves them for. Um, they're very optimistic as well. And it is sort of like, it could be toxic positivity as well. Uh, because they're always, they have something or the other that's going to make them happy. And um, and there's literally like nothing that can bring us a, a Sagittarius down. So hanging out with a Sagittarius is great because if you're feeling low, they're going to definitely put you in a better mood and they're going to lift you up. Um, and uh, even though I said that about them being toxic, positive but they they are very grounded as well um and they do know what is right what is wrong because they're very self-critical they're always analyzing themselves looking um taking a mirror and looking deep into it seeing who they are and that's where their interest in religion and spirituality comes 
Sagittarius is represented by an archer holding a bow and it's all about um like it's it's about the um the detail that they put into things and again the depth with which they explore subjects in their life suggested careers would include being a brand ambassador a pr manager development officer instructor investigator travel agent personal trainer travel guide pilot teacher preacher any subject that um that they can learn and then teach is something that would really excite a sagittarius moving to this next slide we have capricorn um a capricorn uh is um is it's a mountain goat um and the story of it is that the goat is set to climb this mountain and unless and until it doesn't reach the the top its journey isn't over which is why capricorns are very um hard working and they have this uh, leadership quality in them um they're very responsible very disciplined they can be very serious um and wise because they have cultivated that wisdom um they can be very confident as well but not in the cocky way that a leo is um in a very grounded way because a capricorn knows the ins and outs of any subject that they are tackling the uh, the element is earth and that makes them very grounded and connected to earth um and also very practical and logical um that's great um suggested careers for a capricorn would include being a manager an accountant a banker nurse teacher computer programmer um capricorns are uh, really good at managing whether it's people or projects and um any sort of management excites a capricorn moving to the next slide <laughs> I'm glad that you all are resonating with this. Um, the second last zodiac sign is Aquarius. And Aquarians are known to be very emotionally detached from, um, from their friends, from their family. Um, they usually keep to themselves uh, and it it's sort of why they are elusive and would want to spend more time by themselves. But at the same time, they're very sociable because they're ruled by the element of air, it is all about communicating, expressing, exchanging ideas, learning from different people, learning from different cultures. And that's what separates Aquarius from the other air signs because Aquarius is very um, forward thinking. They look into the future and they're thinking about things that haven't happened. They're thinking about revolutionizing things as uh, things are right now. And they're always thinking about improving um the status quo um the advent of ai right now is something that resonates with the sign of aquarius because it is something that is um different and uh and and um new age and it's gonna take the future in a different direction um so anything that deals with um stuff that is new that is going to revolutionize a uh, society or our way of being create a new normal it's all aquarius is doing um they're very independent emotionally detached like i said they're very loyal um innovative intellectual um they care a lot about humanity um even though they may not show it but they do and they're always thinking about how they can make this world a better place um, suggested careers include them being a trainer, an environmental engineer, mediator, actor, scientist, data analyst, astronaut, inventor, technological innovator, skydiving instructor, radical activist. Anything that's different um, from the rest is what an Aquarius is going to be drawn towards. Moving to the last one, we have Pisces. Um, Pisces is known as the most sensitive zodiac sign um, after cancer, probably. It's ruled by water, and Pisces have a very innate ability to connect with um, the otherworldly realms and channel wisdom from uh, spirit guides and guardian angels. Uh, 
they're known to be uh, the dustbin of the zodiac signs because it is said that Pisces has a little bit of every zodiac sign that comes before it and which is why uh, Pisces is all seeing they see through masks that other people are wearing they see through ego personalities and they see the higher soul the higher self that's in a physical body um, because of this ability to tap into the unknown they can, they're naturally psychic they could be interested in the occult they're very giving because they understand humans and they have that deep empathy to share with other people. They're very deeply emotional and they uh, they care a lot about people, their friends, family, very caring, very giving, um, also very ca uh, compassionate. Um, Pisces is ruled by um, the fish so, and it's actually a fish swimming in different directions. Um, one is trying to swim below, which is, uh, you know, everything in the darkness that lowers the Pisces. And then there is this uh, fish swimming upwards, um, moving upstream, which is all the light that calls out to a Pisces. So a Pisces can be very lazy and negligent if, uh, if they become the lower fish swimming down or if they are swimming against um, the stream and moving up. They're the ones who are going to be, um, you know, doing new things pioneering um new stuff um you know channeling connecting with um aliens and other worldly beings in different uh spaces and different times so uh pisces has that ability to tap into the mystical and see what other signs cannot uh, suggested careers for them could be being a writer, poet, recruiter, physical therapist, social worker, salesperson, healer, spiritual leader, musician, photographer, anything um, connected to the art space or connected to spirituality or religion is something that a Pisces would thrive in. So that is it. Thank you so much, um, everyone, for uh, moving through with all these 12 zodiac signs. I'll now pass it back to Radha. Thank you so much for giving us that background. Um, for anybody who didn't already know about the Zodiac signs, they are also in the book. There's much more of a description for each one of them. Um, so let's actually turn to the book, Shweta. Um, I was really excited. Like For me, what I really resonated with was the concept of the soul and how so much of it was not just predetermined, but predetermined by us when it comes to this current life. So could you tell us a little bit about what you were mentioning about like the soul blueprint and, and some of that, those concepts? Yeah, sure. So um, the biggest awakening I had in my life was uh, when I was reading this book by Dr. Brian Weiss called Many Lives, Many Masters. And the story was of this protagonist who in past life regressions remembers um, who she was and what her sole purpose was and that really inspired me to write my book and I when I read that I deeply resonated with it because I felt like I had taken birth in this life to write and um, my communication abilities and skills were very apparent in school and that's the path that I took later um, becoming a journalist writing, interviewing, um, connecting with people and just disseminating whether it was news or just interviews. So I was put into a space where I was aware of what my soul's strengths were. And then I also had this awakening, this realization that, wait, I've been here before. I was probably a scribe or a writer in a past life. And that's why those skills and those strengths have come to me so naturally. And then it was that this isn't just true for me, it's true for everyone around me. Because we're all reflections of each other. We all come from the same source. We look different, we talk differently, but energy connects us and, um, and that's who we really are. So that became like a seed for my book. So um, in the first chapter itself, which is called Decoding Your Soul's Blueprint, I talk about 
how we have been here before and I take everyone through a little exercise where they um, write down what are their strengths in their life, what are their weaknesses, what are some areas of your life that you wouldn't share with anyone and what are some dreams that you have, what are some goals, aspirations, things that you want to achieve in this life. And all of these questions sort of come from the personality that we just went through with the sun sign, the moon sign, and the rising sign, because the three of those signs puts together our personality and who we are. So the sun sign would be uh, like the strength, the, the strengths and the skills that you have. The moon sign would be the self that you're not sharing, showing other people or not sharing. Um, it's what you keep to yourself. The rising would be what your probably your co-workers see at your workplace. Um, so that's what the first chapter is, where it's um, asking you to look deeper into your life and explore what are some recurring themes that keep coming up for you. And uh, can you use those themes to progress in your life? Because ultimately, we're all here to grow. And we end up choosing the sort of lessons that we want to learn for ourselves. Um, and which is where, you know, if sometimes we get stuck in this victim mentality that, oh, why is this happening to me? But if we zone out and look at it from a higher perspective, we'll see that we were the ones who actually chose those lessons. We chose the situations that we wanted to be in. And we chose it because we wanted to experience growth and learning through that. And um, one of my favorite chapters in the book is on um, soulmates and exploring past lives, because um, I do believe in, in all my studies, um, I have found that souls tend to incarnate with the same souls again and again, because we sometimes have some karmic contracts with them. Um, it could be positive contracts, it could be negative contracts, but there's always this exchange of um, energy that needs to happen. And that is why we meet certain people, we're attracted to them because we have karma with them. And um, once we realize who these soulmates are, we can use them and accelerate our own journey so that we can progress further and eventually transcend and come out a wiser human being. I love that chapter as well, obviously, because I'm a big believer in soulmates. Um, but what I really loved is how you explained this to me, because I think a big question everybody asks or uh, it comes up a lot when you're talking about past lives is, if this all happened, how come I don't remember it, right? And you, you, you do a really good analogy in your book about how imagine that we all know these rules that's inside of us, but we're attending the school in order for this school to be fair for all the students, we're all starting blank. But, we're, but we already knew getting into that school where we wanted to go and how we wanted to live our life. So I just really like that analogy, Shweta. Is that something you came up with or Dr. Weiss? This is definitely something that's original. I just thought that uh, this analogy would help explain um, the concept to readers uh, who are not accustomed to the idea that we've been here on Earth before. Yeah, and I really love how you you took the, the concept of the soul, which is very much spiritual, but then you you weave it through, right? We have astrology, we have numerology. You talk a section about the career path, which I think is what you were trying to do with the, the presentation. So it, it really just shows that so much of who we are was, was already determined by us. Um, and it's cool to explore and find out why that it was already put in place. Exactly, yeah. A lot of us are in careers which are not satisfying us. And the reason could be that, you know, our parents told us to do that, or maybe that career path would bring us more money. But eventually, it's not really about the money. It's not about doing things that other people want us to do. It's about doing what we want to do. It's about remembering that we have this blueprint, that our soul has this blueprint, and it's it will it's like destiny unfolding. 
Sometimes we may want to take a certain path, but that's necessarily not the right path that will take us um, forward, which is why maybe things don't work out. Um, and then, you know, we're all disappointed, but it's the ego being very attached to the outcome. The soul is very detached. The soul is, you know, very nonchalant. The soul is just watching. It's the observer. Um, and that's something that I've learned um, as a meditation teacher when we're sitting down in silence, looking within, with only connecting with the soul, which is the observer. The soul is not the doer. The body is the doer. And it's about connecting with the soul and seeing what does the soul um, feel like doing, what feels right. And again, this is a practice that I use in my meditation, connecting with the heart chakra, because the heart resonates with the soul's frequency. And, and not a lot of people know that. But when we tune into our heart, we're actually tuning into our soul's frequency. And then we're able to decide if a certain decision is right for us or if it isn't. If we're thinking from our mind, our ego, then we're not going to be tuning into our heart and we're going to make a decision which, which could potentially end up being the wrong one for us. Obviously, we have our guardian angels and our higher self always guiding us and giving us those intuitive nudges or, you know, signs that we see like recurring numbers or, you know, feathers or pennies on the street. These are all signs that we're seeing, but they're coming from the spirit realm. If you want to decide if something is right for you, tune in to your soul's frequency, your heart chakra. And if if you get a good feeling, then that's the right action to take. That's the right decision to make. That's, you know, it's right. It's good for you. But if if it's, you know, if it's a bad feeling, then it's definitely not meant for you. Um, and something bigger and better is going to come. So, Shweta, um, that actually is a good segue into the next section. But I just want to mention, if anybody has any questions for Shweta, please go ahead and drop them in the comments. Isha said that she is starting to learn all of these lessons that we're discussing, and she's very inspired to grow and explore other sides of this. Do you have any, I know there's resources in the book, but do you want to share anything that Isha could maybe do after today's session? Yeah, definitely. I'm so happy, Isha, that you're taking this first step towards self-realization because it always begins with yourself. Um I would say uh, explore um, tools like tarot or oracle cards um, as that's something that I used uh, in my own journey um, for my own self. Um, I'm, I'm a certified tarot reader, crystal healer, psychic meditation teacher, so I can do this for you as well. If you have a question, um, you can book a reading and then we can dive deeper. But if it's something that you're doing for yourself, I would definitely recommend reading as much as you can. A lot of self-help books. Um, uh, one that I would recommend that I'm reading right now is The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Wattles. Um, uh, it's a really old book, but um, I'm definitely learning a lot about psychology and um and how to connect with your higher self. Sana has a question that she would like to get on uh, on you for. Go for it, Sana. Yes, hi, um, Radhika and Shweta. Thank you for setting this up. Um, Shweta, I have read all of Brett Brian Weiss's books. I've also um, downloaded your sample and read it um, so far and um, all, you know, makes very much sense to me. I know I'm an old soul. I have, I know I've been reincarnated. I also know what my past, some of my past lives I can take a guess at. But what I don't understand is that there is a God. How is this God allowing us to be in so much pain why would a soul to, you know, like a baby is born with AIDS or addicted to a drug addict, addicted mother or born in people that are born into such poverty? I mean, if we are meant to learn lessons, I mean, how come those lessons aren't easier? Why would God make us, you know, go through this? I love your question. And as soon as I 
came into your energy. I felt a lot of wisdom in your soul. Um, I love that. And you're very right, but it's not God that is doing this. As souls, we have the free will to write a path for ourselves which would help us the most, which would um, enable growth for us, enable transformations to happen. And it's it's all written that way. So we write this for ourselves. We write these tough situations that we will go through, whether it is addiction or AIDS or poverty. We choose that because it's also karmically where that soul is vibrating. Now, there are certain levels in a vibrational scale um, and it goes from lowest to the highest. Low vibrational frequencies would resonate with fear, guilt, um, anger. And if you think about it, this is where majority of people on earth right now are vibrating. And then at the higher scale is, you know, feelings of love, peace, um, enlightenment. This is where people like us are helping other people to come out of that and be self-aware and rise up and change our vibration and, you know, grow through, through that self-awareness rather than growing through victimhood. So it's, um, it's something that we choose for ourselves. Also, it's the vibrational scale at which that soul is vibrating. If it's vibrating at a low level, then their life is going to be more difficult than that of a soul who's already vibrating at a higher level. And the only difference is that the souls who are at a higher vibrational frequency have learned their lessons. And now they're here to help other people and to help awaken their soul friends, soul mates, soul families, and to bring about that shift. So that's my understanding from all the studies that I've done. Quickly, one Thanks. last thing I, I would love for you to touch on as a theme in your book about the spiritual hygiene. Do you want to talk a little bit about mindfulness and self-protection and all that? Yeah, so it's so important. Um, anybody who uh, considers themselves to be an empath um, is somebody who would need a self-protection ritual more than other people who don't. Uh, personally, I am an empath and which is why I realized that whether it's the healing work I do for other people or it's the workplace that I go to, um, it doesn't matter. It's all about protecting yourself um, because you don't know whom you're going to come into contact with. That person could be um, an energy sucker and they could drain your energy and um, and it's happened to me quite a lot. Sometimes empaths tend to attract um, energy vampires uh, because the lesson we need to learn is about setting boundaries. Again, it's a situation we write for ourselves so that we learn the lesson, right? So it's not that um, I am victimizing myself saying I'm an empath, so I need to protect myself. No. Even if you're not an empath, you still need to protect yourself because like I mentioned before, um, the vibrational frequency of the earth that is right now, we're trying to move it ahead, but it still ends up being dark and sad and there's a lot that's wrong with the world. But if we focus on that, we'll become like that. So instead we focus on the good things, the positive things the happy things of life so that we become that and we can help other people who are struggling to come into our happy space. Um, which is why having a spiritual hygiene routine is very important. For me personally, I'll share what it looks like. Um, so I usually have crystals around me. Um, different crystals resonate at different frequencies. Um, so I'm always working with crystals to cleanse my aura. I also do a lot of visualization techniques. So it could be that you're sitting by yourself and you surround yourself with white light. White light is, um, it's as bright as sunlight and it's very energizing. So just surrounding your physical body with white light will cleanse you and leave you feeling really refreshed. 
um apart from that i also uh, follow a very strict fitness routine exercising is very important for the physical body and the more you work out the good you will feel and it's just you know it, it's a it's a cycle that feeds itself so taking care of the body is very important um i i gave up meat like 8 9 years ago so i usually eat clean um no sugar in my diet eating a lot of fruits and vegetables is what i aim for and then lastly for the mind meditation is very important so whether it is um you know taking out time to write gratitude um whether it's mindfulness meditation from that perspective or it is actually sitting down and you know doing a japa which is like a chanting meditation or using a mantra and doing transcendental meditation so there are many types of meditations that you can try if you are someone who loves silence um you know doing a mindfulness one would help if you want to keep your mind engaged then chanting a repetitive mantra or even a number can help you wonderful shweta you are just so full of amazing knowledge tools and resources how can everybody follow up with you after tonight so um you guys can follow me on instagram um uh, my handle is betaro that's s b e t a r o t or you can visit my website shwetagandhi.ca um my taro website is called spetarodeeding.com um i can drop that in the group chat um and uh so like i mentioned before i do a lot of one on one readings for people um whether it's uh you know finding your life purpose or if you have any questions or concerns about your relationships or your business or anything um i use the cards as a tool to bring guidance and then i also channel wisdom so whatever resonates with you um you can book a reading um or you can just stay connected with me on instagram Everybody please do follow her. The how I found out about Shweta is because she also does intuitive uh readings for people in career change and transition. That's why in her book that chapter about learning like your your career, it really I I mean you are an expert on this, so I really love that you wrote about it. Um so thank you guys everyone for joining us tonight. I hope that astrology month has been eye opening and that everybody's gate, you know, got a little bit more insight into who their true self is, what their purpose is. Please do connect with Shweta um and we look forward to seeing you all next month in September. Thank you. Good night everybody. Thank you. Bye.